In this lecture, let's go ahead and let's handle Mongoose validation errors. So let's go to VS Code. And there, let me go ahead and let me open error controller. So this is our global error handling middleware. Now in this global error handling middleware, if we are running our application in production environment, in that case, if the error is not operational, that means if the is operational property is not set on the error object, then those errors will be considered as generic errors and a generic error message will be sent to the client. So when a mongoose validation error will occur, in that case also, we are not setting is operational property on the mongoose validation errors. So when such validation error will occur, in that case also, a generic error message will be sent to the client. Let me actually show you that. So let's go to Postman and there we are trying to create a movie object and this is the movie name. But with this movie name, we already have a movie in the database. So if I go ahead and if I make a request, you see here we have this error. There is already a movie with name and with this name, please use another name. So we are handling this error. This is basically the duplicate key error which we handled in our last lecture. But if some validation error occurs, for example, the rating should not be greater than 10 and less than 1. So if I specify rating as 11, this is not a valid value. So when I make a request here, you see we are receiving the generic error message. Something went wrong, please try again later. That's because this is a mongoose validation error. And on that mongoose validation error, we have not set is operational property. So is operational will be false in that case. And whenever the is operational is false for an error object, we are sending this generic error message. So now what we want to do is, we want to make these mongoose validation errors as operational errors so that we can send a meaningful error message to the client. Now, when does these mongoose validation errors will occur? If I go back to VS Code and if I open the movie model, you see that on each of these fields, we have specified some restrictions. We are validating the data in some way. For example, a movie name should be unique and a movie name can have a minimum of four characters and a maximum of 100 characters. If we specify less than four characters for a movie name, a validation error will occur. In the same way, if we specify more than 100 characters for a movie name, again, a validation error will occur because in those cases, the data which we are receiving for this name field, that will not be a valid data. In the same way, this description is a required field. So if we don't specify a value for this description, again, a validation error will occur. Then here we have this ratings. And for the ratings, the value must be between 1 and 10. If we specify any other value, in that case, again, the validation error will occur. And all these validation errors will be thrown by Mongoose. Okay, now if I go back to Postman, here we are receiving this generic error message. But we actually want to see the actual validation error messages which has happened. For that, all we have to do is, we have to run our application in development mode. Currently, it is running in production mode. And that's why we have this generic error message. So let's go ahead and let's run this application in development mode. For that, I will first stop this process. And then let's go ahead and let's run this application in development mode. For that, we can type this command npm run start. So we have our script in this package.json file. So when we use the start script, in that case, it is going to run the application in development mode. But when we use the start prod, in that case, it is going to run the application in production mode. So currently, we want to run our application in development mode. So let's go ahead and let's run this command, this script. And if I scroll up, just to verify whether the application is running in development or production mode. So here you can see this node inf. Okay. So as you can see, this node inf, it is currently development. That means the current node environment is development environment. Let's go back to Postman and let's make a request again. And now we should get the actual validation error message. So basically here you can see we have the validation error and it says rating should be above one and below 10. So here we have the error object. Inside that error object, we have this errors property, which is again an object. Okay. And inside this errors object, we can see all the validation errors, which has occurred on the model. Currently, only one validation has occurred on the movie model, which is this value, which we are specifying for the ratings field. So basically 11 is not a valid value for this ratings field. But if I go ahead and let's say if I remove a required field, for example, this duration is a required field. If I remove this and also if I go ahead and if I specify a name 
for this movie which is less than four characters maybe abc so for the movie name we are only specifying three characters but the minimum length of a movie name should be four characters that's what the restriction we have set on the movie model right so this will also throw a validation error so if i make a request again here again we will have the error object in the error object we will have this errors property which is again an object and this errors property is going to contain all the validation errors so this is the first error the first validation error which has occurred on the duration field so duration is a required field you can see the error message here and name of the error is validation error if i scroll down we have another validation error on the name field so again the type is validation error and here we have the validation error message and again if i scroll down we should have a validation error on the ratings field as well so here you can see that validation error so all the validation errors which will occur on a model that will be present inside this errors object okay so when these validation errors will occur we will receive this error object in our global error handling middleware so in the error controller here we have the global error handling middleware so for this error parameter we are going to receive this error object and this error object if i scroll down it will have a name property so you can see it has a name property which is of type validation error so based on this name we are going to identify all the mongoose validation errors so let's go back to vs code and here let me go ahead and let me write another if statement and here let's say if the error dot name if it is equal to validation error so let me go back to postman and let me copy this name and let's paste it here in that case we want to set the error object by calling a function let's maybe call this function validation error handler okay and to this function let's pass the error object all right now let's go ahead and let's create this function so let me scroll up and after this duplicate key error handler let's go ahead and let's create another function let's call it validation error handler and this one is going to receive the error object i'll simply call it err now what do we want to do inside this function well if i go back to postman from this error object we want to get the value of this errors property and the value for this errors property is this so till here is the value for the errors property and in that value we have all the validation errors okay so we want to get the value of this errors property for that let's go back and for that what we can do is we can use object dot values function for that so we can say object dot values and here we can specify the property name for which we want to get the value so here we can say err dot errors okay so this object dot values of err dot errors it is going to return three values we are passing the errors object right so for this errors object we have three property duration name and ratings and for these properties we want to get its values we want to get the value for this duration property which is this object we want to get the value for this name property which is this object and we want to get the value for the ratings property which is this object so these three objects will be returned by this expression and it will be returned as an array and on that array we can use the map function and to this map function so basically this err dot errors it is going to pass a value for each iteration so here i will simply call it as value so this value is a parameter and there we want to get the message from that value so we can say val dot message okay so basically for the first iteration this object will be passed to the val parameter and from that object we are reading the message property okay so this object will be assigned to this well and from that we are reading its message property for the second iteration this object will be passed to this well and again from there we are reading its message property so basically we are reading this value and in the same way for the third iteration this object will be passed to the well parameter 
and from there we are reading its message okay so we are going to receive an array because this map function it is going to return an array let's go ahead and let's assign that array to a variable and let's call that variable errors now inside this errors variable we will have three error messages because currently on our model there will be three validation errors so we want to send those validation error messages to the client so for that what i'm going to do is i'll create a variable i'll call it error messages and then i will join all the error messages inside this error array for that on this error array i can use this join method and how do we want to join let's say we want to join it by a dot and a space so it should be within quotes so we want to join it by a dot and a space then let's go ahead and let's create an error message and here i will use back ticks and there let's say invalid input data and then we want to specify all the error messages so i'm going to use this template literal syntax and there i will pass this error messages like this and now what we want is we want to create an operational error and to create an operational error we can simply create a new instance of our custom error class there we can pass the error message so we have that error message inside this message variable and we can specify the status code so again the status code is going to be 400 for bad request okay and let's go ahead and let's return this error so basically what this custom error class will do is it is going to return a new error and that new error will be an operational error because there the is operational property will be set to true with this let's save the changes and let's stop the process by pressing ctrl c and let's go ahead and let's run this application in production mode now so for that we can run this command npm run start prod so this script will run this application in the production mode if i press enter now the application should be running in the production mode so let's go back to postman and there let's see if we are still getting the generic error message or the actual validation error messages so now if i make a request currently now we are in the production mode so you see now we are receiving the actual validation error messages instead of receiving a generic error message so here we have all the validation error messages so duration is a required field this is the first error message movie name must have at least four characters this is the second error message and rating should be above one and below 10 so this is the third error message all right so now we are also handling the mongoose validation errors so basically in all these three cases we are making the error as an operational error by creating a new custom error object so when we create an instance of this custom error inside this custom error class we are setting the is operational to true so based on the original error we are creating a custom error object and that custom error object will have is operational set to true that means that error will be an operational error and then we are handling that operational error here inside this global error handling middleware so as i mentioned in the previous lectures here we basically want to send a meaningful error message to the client to the user and we don't want to expose much data about the error to the end users also if the error is an operational error then only we are going to send the error message the actual error message to the client otherwise if the error is not an operational error in that case we are sending a generic error message to the client something like this all right so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day